looking at this. I click Submit, do we see any evidence that's going back to the server? Compared to I go and click Submit here. I go and click Submit here. because we did minus one, right? But we can see that page refreshing up there. It's kind of subtle, but notice there, that little E does a little wink at you, which indicates it's reloading that page. Whereas I put in garbage here, no winks, because it's not refreshing and it's not going back to the server. Now, you might think I'm belaboring the point, but it's really important to understand the manner in which a client and server interact. Otherwise, things will be mysterious to you. All right, things will be mysterious to you. That code lives on the server, so it only gets executed when the server gets called. The validator controls when client-side scripting is enabled prevents the form from being submitted to the server when the validation errors exist. So it's important to understand that. Yes? I, I get that. Right. Well, but you didn't have any validation on the client side at that point. Right. If so, it, so the error message was because it was hitting the server and the validation. The error message was because I didn't have any validation at all on it. It was hitting the server and it tried to process numerically something that was a string. Okay. Yeah. So that's why we were getting the error before. That code is bad now just as it was before. I mean, Bad in the sense that there's no try catches, not doing anything. It's just taking the text box, trying to do its thing with it, and all that. But it caused consequences before because there was because it was getting hit when there was bad data. Now, all right, let's try to disable JavaScript. I might actually go a little overtime today. Um, because I, I, I want to talk about another form control, but I want to finish my thought here, too. Let me go in and hope I can find disabling JavaScript. Settings. There we go. Repeat. Scripts, I want the options of the JavaScript console. trying to figure this out from <laughs> turn off JavaScript. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Google's my friend. <laughs> All right. Blah, 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 blah. Options under the hood, content settings. Yeah, it would help if I had options. Um, maybe tools and then options. There it 
Center Studies under Sonia Dacron. There we go. Ah, JavaScript. Uh, Do not yeah. allow any sites to run JavaScript. There you go. Okay. So, let's go and run this guy in Chrome. in here and click submit. I'm back to where I was before. All right. Why am I back to where I was before? Because I have defeated JavaScript. I have defeated my client side validations. All right. Therefore, the form does get submitted to the server because there's nothing to stop it. But wait. Didn't you say before yeah. that those validation controls and, uh, fire off both? Right. They do, but my code has to realize that and has to accommodate for that. I haven't changed this code at all. All right. Therefore, when that button's clicked, it's going to try and do that. I need to go and add a line of code. This says if is valid. Oops. Thank you. is with yeah. capital I. All right. Now if I go and run it on Google Chrome, put garbage in here, tells me must be numeric. Put garbage in here, tells me that. Now, it's winking at us again. It's getting to the server, right? But it's not blowing up. The lesson of this is, and again, there are those of you that might say, why didn't he just like four hours ago tell us to put this line of code in, all right, and be done with it? It is important to understand how the client and server interact, though. So it's not just the one line, it's understanding why we need the one line. So what should be in every one of your button click events is an if is valid. What does that mean? What that means is is valid is a variable that's associated with a page. All right? And is valid will be true if all the validation controls on the page pass validation. Is valid will be false if any of them have not passed. So technically, they could get the client to send is valid to the server. The server doesn't have to do validation itself. No. 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 Well, if it passes on the client side, it could just send the is valid to the server. That so would it's, it could just set it to true. No, 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 you're, uh, no, you're, I mean, you're not, that, that's, that's no, dangerous. no, it, it's not even a matter of dangerous, it's, it's just not possible, no. that's like saying, you know, could I, what if I wave my magic wand, could I make the server, <laughs> no, you can't, you can't, the server maintains those variables, there's nothing I can do on a client that affects the way that the server processes an ASP.NET page. Is it, so it's just sending and receiving data. It's not influencing the process, as you're saying, on the server. Maybe I don't completely understand your question, your initial question. So he's saying, I think, once you go through the validation checks, right. instead of, send, you know, you can just basically say everything's checked. Everything's if correct. If everything don't passes go to the on server. the client side, 
the client could send is valid to the server, so the server doesn't have to revalidate everything. Yeah. So you're gonna see More trouble than it's worth. Could it be that way? Maybe. Well, I was wondering if that's how they actually do no. it. No. Of no. It, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm almost sure it repeats the validation. And the thing is, is keep in mind these validations are typically so trivial that, okay, yes, it took an extra micron of a second or whatever to, to do it, but it, it doesn't add up to anything well, significant. in the beginning, that was sort of the benefit of doing it on the client side, so we didn't clog the server up, but now we're still clogging the server up. <laughs> no, we're not. Because if clients, if, because if the, if the, if it doesn't pass validation, then we don't bother trying to process it. It, it, the, the, the problem isn't the problem isn't a couple of if statements. The problem is having to deal with a document that isn't completed, mm -hmm. having, having to deal with a form entry that clearly right. isn't correct. So if we can eliminate that, which we do, yeah. then the, 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 the issue of executing a handful of extra if statements that's not really an issue. That's not really clogging the server up. What clogs the server, one second, what clogs the server up is trying to deal with requests that are clearly bogus. Yes? Plus you said part of it is redundancy, right? Having that additional level of validation. Well, we haven't addressed the additional level of validation yet. All right? We haven't addressed the fact that the server might want to go beyond just the rudimentary is this field filled in? Is it a valid email address? And so on. So we haven't addressed. We haven't began to address that yet. All right. This is this is just repeating the validation in case client side is not enabled. I, oh, really quick, I was wondering if is it that that statement that's a C sharp statement. That's a C sharp statement. It's part of the button click event. Is valid is a page level attribute that the .NET framework sets. If all the validation controls pass, it's true. If any of the validation controls fail, it's false. You had a question? Yeah, so without the is valid, the server-side validation you initially mentioned doesn't actually occur. It occurs. We just didn't do anything about it. So it does happen. So it does happen. We just haven't, we just, we haven't said stop the presses. All right. So yeah, it occurs, but we just, you know, we 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 don't. We still go ahead and try to do the calculation. Okay. All right. What I'd like to talk about quickly is other form controls because I know for your project, uh, for your assignment, you have to do a drop down. So I want to introduce drop downs to you pretty quick. All right. Drop downs are another form control. Drop down list. I'll tell you what, I'll go into code view and create my LI and drop it in there. Now, initially it says unbound. That means that it doesn't, it's not getting its values from the database. All right? At some point, we're going to create drop downs that get their values from a database. So if we wanted to have several categories, if we want to have a drop down to contain all the categories of a product, we'd access the database and would bind this control to. The, the database source that contained the list of products or list of categories. What we're going to do instead is we're going to manually edit the items. And I'm going to go in and add. And I can create something that has a text and has a value. So let's say I'm doing a drop down for. Um, your major. I could put accounting as a text and a 
ACCT as the value. I could add another one that says computer info systems and put in CISS as a value. The text is what the user is going to see. So it should be written in, in, a, in a manner that is intelligible to the user. The value is what the scripts need to do their job. So in this particular case, the thought was is that whatever script I'm going to use this for is going to need the actual college code of CISS for Computer Information Systems, ACCT for Accounting. So now when I run this, I have those options. As you might imagine, the drop-down... There's the text. If we look at the source, it got sent to the client. Somewhere in here. Here we go. The value corresponds to the value that we typed in. So we have text and value. Now here is a slight difference in drop downs in between a desktop application and a web application. Question is, how do you validate a drop down? Let's say I want to make sure the user picks something. A drop down on a web form will always have a selected value. Always, always, always have a selected value. I don't think that's the case necessarily in a desktop application. You can have a desktop application where nothing is selected. It's not the case in, in, uh, in a web. Something's always selected. If you don't specify what gets selected, the first element's considered to be selected. So, let's say I wanted to ensure that the user makes a selection here. I couldn't leave it as it is, right? Because accounting is selected. And therefore, there's nothing to designate that the user has not selected anything. So what I have to do is I have to add a dummy value. So I'll go in and I'll add a dummy value that says something like, please... Make selection. And I can leave the value at please make selection if I want or, or whatever. I can make that one the top one on the list. So now when I run this, If the user doesn't select anything, it's not defaulted to accounting, but it's defaulted to please make selection. Now, how do I validate that then? I validate that with a valid uh, with a required field validator. I'm going to associate that required field validator to with the drop down. I'm going to say please select major or something like that. But, excuse me. Mm -hmm. You said what did you, right before that last statement you're going to associate it with? For every validation control you have to assign it to the control that you're validating. Assign it to the control. Yeah. So I'm associating this validation control with that drop-down. Nice. Now, here's where we give the initial value. And here's where we put in what the dummy value is. And the dummy value is, please make selection. So whatever value 
value made it if you decide to do key Whatever key value the value dummy value is, you put as the initial value, and then you can validate it. So now if I go in and there it tells me please select major. Whereas if I pick accounting, please select it passed that validation. I'm getting this error because I did not put a required field validator on the um, on the first one again. I should probably go and do that just for completeness. See how you can use the panel to make your life easier. All right, any questions? Um, this might be a silly question because I'm looking at it at design view versus source view. But when you're dragging these validators over in design view, are you having to make sure that you physically drop them on top of each text box or a drop down list to make sure that they uh, connect it to the proper one? No, that's not what connects it to the proper one. Okay. What connects it to the proper one is when I define the control to validate. Okay. So I could theoretically put that validation control up here if I wanted to. Or if I wanted to have a little box down here that had all the validation, all the error messages, I could put all the validators down there if I preferred. You know, you've seen on some pages where you go to validate, and it, it doesn't show you the message right next to it. It shows you a list on the bottom. So I don't have to, the physical proximity has nothing to do with it. You assign the control to validate, and that's what associates it. I, I, I actually probably relate better to having things listed by name, so. Okay. And, and you're dragging it all to a form. You're, you, we added a form, right? To, when, when we're creating the web page right away, you, you have to add a form to it. No, no. Web forms by default are forms. Oh, they are. So when we create a new page, when we go up here and say file, new, file, right. and say create a new web form, boom, if we look at it, it's a form. Okay, so, and then if you look in the design view, you can drag stuff on. I, I switch between design view and, and uh, source view because it, the, the manner in which I do it is what seems easier to me. You know, as you work through it, you'll find what works for you. So, you know, just over time, you know, there, there's not necessarily any clear rhyme or reason why I do it one way versus the other, I guess what I'm saying. Question. Other questions, rather. All right. I'll go unlock the lab so you folks can get settled. Then I'm going to come back here to make sure I post the examples and grab the video. And then I'll be back over.